Hey there, I'm Alex, and today I want to show you a new custom cattery tool I found a few weeks ago, which does mats for you very quickly with high level of detail. And that's that's really incredible with the little effort you have to put in to get those. Uh, so I'm going to go straight into it. So I'm going to I'm going to link you to the original GitHub page, which is this one right here. And keep in mind, this is a model that was built for images, not for video. So temporal stability, like any other cattery um, tool, is not not really there. So there is a bit of chatter. There's a bit of uh, bubbling. But still, having something like this immediately to for us to use, just unbelievable. So once again, the tool was ported over by Rafael Perez, as usual. Um, so he's, he's just killing it with porting these over for us to use. And like I said, I've been using it for a couple months, and it's just been incredible. So I'll link you to both the original GitHub and the ported over to Nuke, and you can just add it to Cattery. All the instructions are here for you to follow, so I'll just leave you to it. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and jump into Nuke here, and this is what the node looks like. So when you bring it in, uh, you want to enable your GPU. I, I haven't tested it without, so I imagine it's going to be exponentially slower if you do the, the CPU route. So just use GPU. And then, as usual, we have our proxies. By default, it comes in at 1024. I have found it chugging sometimes at 2048 if the plate is 4K. So I, I try to keep it at 1024. And maybe if there's specific areas that I want to use it for, if I'm working on a 4K plate, what I do is I just crop it and reformat it, and then I run it at a higher inference so that so that the memory bandwidth is there. Uh, and then you have an edge thickness, which I'll get to in a minute. Uh, so that's that's the node. And I, I, I have a few examples to show you here, but I want to start with one that uh, that just demonstrates how crazy this is. So the image I have here, so I'm just going to block here a few frames. So the, the video I have here is very complicated. If we needed to extract her, this would be a bit of a nightmare because it's just uh blonde hair over very yellow tones on the background so yellow greens so this is you know the colors fighting each other so what i did here is i just did a very loose roto as you can see it's just a couple spheres uh a couple circles here and the moment you attach the vit mat to it right so if we look at the alpha this is what we're providing so we have our plate we have our alpha that I've provided, and then the mat just does its magic, which is just incredible that we go from this to this. And then I've just added a grade note just so that I can I can crunch this a bit. So if I if I look at the alpha here again, you can see it's just getting rid of maybe a bit of, of the fussy edges and then just pumping the 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 actual uh, the alpha itself. So if we look at the pre mult here, right, and I play this back, what you'll see is it doesn't take a lot to to compute and keep in mind this one is actually set at 2048 so i did keep it at, at a high uh, format of inference and the reason why is because this is smaller plate so it, it's i think uh about 10 1080 wide so it's it's a tall tall plate so you can see very quickly with very very little effort we get this out, right? So it does take some time to get used to how to approach the rotor that you're going to be feeding it. And I'll show you a few examples of, of issues and pitfalls that you might run. But even what, what's exciting about this is that even if this is not temporally stable, in theory, with things like this, it works really well. So I'm not saying this is by no means going to replace your keyers or roto itself, but for things that you need to do, you know, quickly this is just incredible so you can see the edge of our of her head ears earring all that stuff is, is you know holding on pretty well i have examples where it doesn't really do that that well but for stuff like fur flowing hair just like very tricky edges this thing is my go-to it's unbelievable how well it works so i'll show you a few examples here as we move along and i did want to show you something else that i'm not going to be showing you on the rest of the examples but it looks like this is kind of the way to to build this so uh, or at least the recommended way even though i haven't had the need to do it this way so what i have here on my second stream is if we look at the roto i have uh i'm, I'm gonna put the image here so what i have is i have a roto for her uh, i'm just gonna for her core mat let's call it right and then a very uh, another another mat for the hair itself so if we look at this now right and through the alpha what i've done is i've reduced the opacity of the outer uh, of the outer edge handling the 
the actual flowing hair, right? So I've, I have it at 0.43, the opacity itself. So if we, if I were to bring this back up to one, right, and just provide this as the mat for this, right, you do get something, right? If we look at through the VIT mat here, right? But you see the the issues as we. This is where the the second. Uh, the, the second part of the tool comes in here, the edge thickness, right? So you can start increasing this number and you see it starts crunching our mat inwards, sort of like a key chew. So if we, if I keep going, I can, I can push it, right? And, and I, I eventually it just blows up and it breaks. So you, you just need to find that you're going to, you're going to find, you're going to be doing this a lot, right? They're just messing with the edge thickness. I up it by 10 and that's usually how I do it. And then uh, if I, if I leave it, then, you know, fine. If, if we compare it here and here, you know, I, I still, the, the inference on this one is 1024. So of course it's a bit, uh, a bit, a bit more blurry. You can see the difference there. But what's interesting is if, if I just bring it back to default 30, as it, as it comes by default and you see our result is very blocky, very bad. But if I go ahead and select that outer mat for the detail and bring down the opacity, something like I had a 0.4 or something like that, it kind of does that for us, right? So it takes that opacity into consideration. So it does provide a nice core mat for us. And then does the, the lower opacity mat, it does treat with, with a higher level of detail. So you can, you can go again back in here and then adjust the edge thickness to see if, you, if you're missing out on any details, right? So that's, that's more or less how you use it. But if, if we look again here at the, the result, it's just, I, I, I can't get enough of this tool. It's, it's really, really great. Like I said, it's by no means a perfect Roto solution. It's not meant to replace that, I don't think. Uh, where it's not there at this time, but having this just with, a, you know, five seconds of effort because it's just two, two ovals that I've added. This is just incredible. So let me, let me move ahead um, to another example here. So we have this bear against a very bright background with a lot of fur detail here on the edges. And that would be, again, a nightmare to extract if we needed to add something on the background. Um, so what I have here, let me go just here to, I have a few, um, Key, keyframes here. So what I have here, let me actually get rid of this keyframe. Looks like that's a bum one. There we go. And then I'm going to go here to my frame, right? So what we have here, and and this is, I'm going to actually go ahead and delete this uh, VIT mat. So I do it from scratch for you. So I'm, I'm going to go ahead and select that. So we have our, our bear and we have our mat that is actually bigger than the subject itself. It doesn't always need to be that way, but you'll see that that's kind of the the muscle memory that you'll start to build as you use the tool more. So I'm going to bring in a default, a default VIT mat here for us. And then if we look at the result, not great, right? If we look at the pre-mold here, we have a bunch of stuff that shouldn't be there. So that's where the edge thickness comes in. So I'm going to start bumping it up from, from, from 30 to 40. So you see it starts crunching inwards as we do that, right? Until eventually, because this is a very thick subject, it, I guess the, we have enough uh, pixels that the the mat can crunch a lot and we were not uh, uh, opening any holes onto the bear itself so I'm gonna keep going up something like maybe 200 right and you, you see while pretty good like that's pretty good if we compare this to the original right like that's that's really good detail already but you see that we have areas where it's not really respecting our boundary so what you can do is you can select your roto again and just you know, looking through uh, with with the VIT mat, just start adjusting that roto inward. So you can start, you know, chopping those areas off and it will still, even even though it's not contained within the bounding box of the roto, you see it's still giving us pixel data for that area, right? So I'm gonna do the same here for the rock, right? And then there, there you have it. So this is just, you know, really, really cool, really exciting. With very little effort, we have, you know, more or less extracted the bear in the sense that we could add something in the background and this this is much better than you know a mixture of keying and roto you can just very quickly do something i'm just going to cache a few frames here just to see what this looks like through the tool and keep in mind that this is where we would need to adjust the roto over time because again oh it looks like i have another keyframe around here let me yep so let me get rid of this one this is the one where we adjust it so i'm going to go ahead and play this back All right and you'll see very quickly that, you know, it, even though I have only done one frame of Roto, this is 
good enough for this. Like, you don't need to be chasing the edges all the time. Like, if you see problem areas, like I see a lot of chatter here on this ear, then you can do that. And that's where I've been doing a lot of um, just adding a grade node after the VAT mat, setting it to alpha, and then just crunching the gamma a bit, right? So if we look at the pre mold here, what you'll see is it, we, we do get rid of some of, uh, or at least lessen some of that chatter, right? By, by crunching the gamma a bit and then gaining up just so that we, you know, get rid of any holes or any, any softer edges that really shouldn't be there. So I'm gonna go ahead and play this back again and you'll see maybe the ear got a bit better, but maybe the, the beauty of this is that you can always just go in and do a separate VIT mat just for the ear. And then you can just start key mixing things as you would a key. So it's it's really cool, really cool to have this. So moving on to another example, very tricky. <laughs> if we had to add something behind this head of hair with a bunch of motion, this would be a bit of you know nightmare fuel. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and uh, jump to this frame. So frame 17, I'm gonna get rid of this. And then all I have here is I'm getting rid of the alpha from the plate. And then I have a very broad mask of her hair, right? So I'm just gonna stop down here so you can see of her head actually. So if I look through a VIT mat here, it looks like a bit of a mess, right? And this is where, again, you can either start adjusting the edge thickness or in our case, let me just go to another frame here. Uh, I'm just gonna delete this frame again, right? You can just start moving your mat around and st and start trying to get rid of as much as that um, uh, of the garbage going on outside as you can. And again, if we look at here, it's it's not really respecting the head, the hair detail. Like it does a pretty good job out of the box, but then if we start adjusting our mat, what we'll see is, let's see here, you see we start helping it so that it crunches in the right place. So I'm gonna give it some space here just so that it fills that gap here. And that, that's where the you, using the tool more and more, you'll start to learn how and and where to put the mats in order to get the, the results you're looking for. And I'm not too worried about stuff like that because the reality is that this is just very easily fixed with you know a bit of roto and a core mat. So what what I'm more more impressed with is the level of detail that you can get from stuff like hair. So if you look at, I'm gonna put a pre mold here, right? And then you can see again you you can do again our trick of adding grade nodes, setting it to alpha, and then reducing that gamma. And this the 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 artifacts that comes along with this feel a lot like when you do. Uh, when you train a copycat node and it hasn't trained for long enough, it has a bit of these ghosts going on, on the outside, easily cleaned up. And if, if you're in a, you know if you're in a hurry and you need just need to create a, an alpha for something really quickly, this is the solution. But you can see even with something as busy as this background here, you get a decent -ish result that the alpha is something that could help you put something on that background. And again, just spending more time tweaking this grade so that you can just hold off the, the areas you're after. So uh, again, I just wanted to show you that by by quickly adjusting the rotor, you can improve things a bit. All right, moving on to the next example here, we have, uh, again, very difficult blonde hair, again, some green background, lots going on in the background. Again, this is not, maybe not a perfect solution here, but if we look at the bits and pieces that could be useful, like the, the right-hand side, and maybe you could you could do a different VAT mat for the top part here. So you can see here's the roto that I'm using. And again, I'm using a separate piece just to punch a hole through, because if, if we go ahead and turn that off, you'll see the result here if I go ahead and turn that off, right? We, we get all that blocked off. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn that back on. But you can you can see here, if I A, B here between, sorry, between the alpha and the RGB, you see all that detail in the arm. And keep in mind, these are these are very compressed MP4s, right? So you, you could definitely get better results with non-compressed footage. But even all that fuzz on the shirt, like all that stuff is there. It's like really, really impressive how, how this, um, how this provides a mat for us. So again, moving on to just the last couple few, last few here. I'm gonna go ahead and jump to that frame and then provide here. So this is the roto I, I did for the runner, right? So if we look at that very loose, just very, very broad roto. And again, if we look here at the alpha, pretty good considering it's even including all of that motion blur, right? So pretty good there and then the areas where we see some of that white still, it's as easy as just coming in back here and then adjusting the roto, just pulling it into the areas that are giving us a bit of trouble. And once again, I'm gonna go ahead and do just a little piece here, just so that it knows that it shouldn't keep anything within there. And then I'm gonna set it to minus here. 
and there you go. So just very quickly, you can see how just adding bits and pieces, you can get the result you're after. And then finally, I want to show you, I've showed you a lot of like soft edges or, or furry, you know, hair edges, which are very complicated, but you could also use it for stuff like, let's say, in this case, let me get rid of this roto here. Let's say you want to isolate the coffee mug here. So you can just very quickly come in here and do again, very, very broad roto, right? There we go. And then if we look here, what you'll see is we get more or less the cup. And once again, I'm going to go ahead and make sure I tell it not to grab any of that area. So I'm going to minus it again. And then that should give us the hole. And again, we can come back here and then start adjusting our mat, right? Until we see it's behaving the way we want to. And then again, we can also adjust the thickness here, right? So there we go. Something like that. And very quickly, with very little effort, we get something, you know, something decent. Again, like I said, so this is this is not meant to replace any roto, of course. This is not as precise, and like I showed, maybe it is. It it, it looks like it's working pretty well and stuff like the flowing hair example I gave you at the beginning, but the reality is that. Uh, this is not a full stop solution. This is just another tool in the arsenal. But uh, something to, I would absolutely recommend you go ahead and grab it because it's just really great to have options, right? So again, very, very excited about this one. I'd definitely uh, give that the, the GitHub from Rafael Perez who actually takes the time to port these tools over for us. Give it some love. I'm, I'm surprised it only has, uh, I don't know, 25 stars on GitHub or something like that. So definitely, you know, share the knowledge, share the wealth and, and give them a, a few stars so that it becomes more popular. And um, it's going to do it for me today, but uh, hopefully you find this useful. Cheers.